Father, we come this time, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for the ultimate sacrifice that you made in giving your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, a ransom for the sins of this world, my sins also, Father. Father, I pray that you would open the hearts of the listeners today, Father. They may be able to receive the message that you have for them today. While I pray that you would open our ears that we may be able to hear what the Spirit saith to the church, Father. I pray that you would open our eyes and remove the scales, Father, that, that we may be able to see what it is you would have us to see in, in your word. Father God, I pray that this would touch the heart of someone, Father. Father, your word says that if we'll draw nigh to you, you will draw nigh to us. And Father, we come to you as humble. And I know how to ask for your presence, to ask for your help, to ask you to lead me and guide me and direct me in the ways that you would have me to go. Father, guard my mouth. That I may speak only what it is that I'm supposed to speak. Father, I pray that you would touch the heart and the soul of those who listen to this message, Father. Thank you. Father, I pray for the young man that I work with that's in work release. Father, I pray for for Noah Starling, and I pray for his grandma, Minnie Starling, Father. Oh God, I pray that you would have your will in his life and in her life, Father. But I'll, I also lift up the rest of the work release inmates, Father, and the rest of my co-workers, Father. Pray that thou would have thy will in their lives, Father. I pray for their salvation, Father. I pray for the peace and the joy, Father, in their lives. I thank you and I give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to be in Genesis 3 this morning. We're going to talk about why God took the rib from the man and formed the woman. Why he used the rib. He could have used any part, any part of the body. But he chose to use the rib. It says in the Lord. Genesis 3 verse 18. It says in the Lord God said. It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every foal of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, 
that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found and help me for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone, a flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, and the man and his wife, and were the, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Now we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 6. It says, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 20. It says, Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present it, him, him, present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies, he that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife. And they shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. Now, we're going to go back to... Genesis 3 where it talks about um, in 21 it says uh, or 20 it says and Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field but for Adam there was not found and help me for him see God formed man from his own image and he gave him a job. The job was to take care of the garden and name all the animals. And when when Adam was done with the job that God had for him, 
God said, okay, it's not good for man to be alone. I'm going to make him someone, you know, a, a helpmate. So, God put Adam to sleep and took the rib from his side. And the reason he took the rib from his side is because it's underneath your arm. It was, it was like God was saying, look, I took them from your side because underneath your arm, that's because you're supposed to keep them under your arm. You're supposed to protect them. You're supposed to cherish them. And he took the rib from man, just like it says in, in Ephesians, Ephesians 6, where it says, uh, chapter 6 verse 28 it says so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies he that loveth his wife loveth himself so if God took the woman from his ribs if, if, if God put Adam to sleep or since God put Adam to sleep not if but since God put Adam to sleep and took the rib from the man and Adam said, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She should be called woman. Okay. It was, it was part of the man. So when God, when, when you get married to a woman, you're no longer two, but you're one. You become one flesh in marriage between, in the eyes of God. So that's why it's saying that you are to love your wives as yourself. It says, for verse 29 says, For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth it and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. And we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones. So, Unless, you know, unless you're walking around cutting yourself and stuff like that, which that, there's a lot of that in the world. But God's not telling you just, okay, since you go around cutting yourself, it's okay to cut your wife. If you're talking down to yourself, it's all right to talk down to her. What he, he's, he's trying to say, look, you know, you're supposed to cherish her. You, you know, he took him for the, he, he took the rib from Adam from underneath his arm. He didn't make her from the bone of his foot, the bone of his hand to be oppressed, the bottom of his, you know, the bone of his foot to, to be able to, um, to, to walk on her. He formed him for the rib because it's where she come from underneath his arm for protection. You know, a lot of women like to walk in front of the person that they're with or behind them. And the men either walk like to walk in front of the woman or behind them. But God formed us that from the rib, that way the woman would walk beside the man. That way if they go to fall, like it says in, in uh, Ecclesiastics, it says, you know, he sent them out by two that... If one should fall, there'd be another one there to help them. That's what the helpmate's for. If you go to fall spiritually, your your wife and your husband, the husband should be there to hold to 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 for the wife to fall on. Vice versa. If the husband is falling, the wife should be there right beside him to keep him from falling. It's if they're walking in front of you and you fall, you, you're going to hit the ground. But if you're walking right there where God brought you from so that you could go back to whenever you got married, that's where you're supposed to go back to his side. You're supposed to, I ain't going to say complete you because you're complete in Christ. Don't get into a relationship thinking, okay, this relationship, uh, now that I'm in this relationship, I'm going to be complete. 
because the Bible tells us that once in Christ, we are complete in Christ. So before you get into a relationship to be complete, seek after, seek God. You know, learn about Jesus. Accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Become complete in Him and live a life pleasing to God and allow God to bring that woman to you or that man to you because it didn't say that God formed a man or that God formed a woman out of the man's rib and they say, hey, Adam, I made something for you. Go over there and find it. You'll see it when you, you'll know it when you see it. It says that God caused the deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And then he brought, he, he took the rib from Adam and then sewed up his flesh or closed up his flesh and then brought the woman to him. Adam didn't even know there was anything called a woman. All he knew was all the animals that he had done named and they wasn't no help made for him. And God said, hey, it ain't good for man to be alone. I'm going to make him a helpmate. That was God's idea. Wasn't Adam's idea. He didn't know nothing about it. So if you're out there chasing, trying to find you a wife, you're going about it the wrong way. The way that you find a wife is you get on your hands and knees and you pray to God and you ask God to send you a godly woman or you ask God to send you a godly man, whichever one you are. And you allow God to bring that person into your life when God's ready to bring them into your life. Because God wants to prepare you for the blessing he's bringing. And he wants to prepare them for the blessing that he's bringing. But if you run out there trying to find one, because everybody's telling you, people told me for three, four years that look, you got to find a wife. Proverbs says a man that, that, finds a, that finds a wife finds a good thing. But you also got to remember that the Bible also tells you that every good thing comes from the Lord. All you got to do is walk in the path that God set before you. Don't take your eyes off God. And if you're single, you know, you hear a lot of people talk about, that, you know, the person that's single, they're in a waiting stage or whatever. Waiting don't mean that you just sit down and say, okay, God, bring it when, you, when you're ready. I'm ready when you're ready. You know, I'm going to sit here and wait on you to bring what I'm asking for. That's faith without works. When you pray a prayer, you got to put your feet to what it is. God has a certain destiny, uh, destinated time that he's going to bring someone into your life if you walk according to him. It says every step Every step of a good man is ordered is ordered by the Lord. Or the steps of a good man is, is ordered by the Lord. So as long as you're seeking after God, God already has everything lined up in your life. Most of the time, we don't get what God has for us because we stop and, and, and see something along the way that kind of detours us off the path that God has for us. And we're not willing to suffer and wait what, for what God has for us. We want to grab what we see along the way. But if you'll read Proverbs, you'll find that there's, there's two different women that Proverbs talks about. One of them is the strange woman, and one of them is a Proverbs 31 woman. The, the strange woman is the harlot. The one that you can run across every day. You can find them everywhere you go. Not saying every woman is a strange woman. But the Bible tells you of, of, of the Proverbs 31 woman. But that woman is hidden. She's covered. She's cloaked. She's, she's hidden by the Lord. And in order to find that one. You can't find her. God has to send her to you. I hope this helps somebody. Uh, Father, I pray that you would take this and 
and nourish us and strengthen us. And thank you for what it is you put on my heart, Father, to, to, to share. I'll give you all the praise for, it, for everything that you plan on doing and the things that you uh, that you're going to do, that you're able to do. We lift up all the sick, all the prayer requests, Father. Father God, Jesus said that whatsoever is asked in my name, that he'll do it, that he may glorify you. So we're giving you thanks. Father, we pray to the same, through the same Jesus, Father, that it stuck his hand up and said, Peace be still to the to the wind, to the storm, and it was calm. To the same Jesus that made the lame walk and the blind to see, cast out the demons as he walked on earth. And we thank you and give you all the praise. All the honor in Jesus' name. Amen.